Hey y'all, did you bring your Rut to Revival book to class today? Just kidding. Today's May Motivation class on the life of being a nomad is going to be none other than budget. I do have a section in Rut to Revival on budget, but we have revised the budget since this book was printed. I'm excited to share with you what my costs are on the road versus living in sticks and bricks and how you too can live as a nomad perhaps for under a thousand dollars a month. I hope you serene and simple life peeps out there. Thank you for joining me for another class here in the tiny home on none other than the subject of being a nomad. Now you're thinking, okay, Linda, you live in a tiny home and you're gonna tell us about being a nomad. Well, for those of you who are new, you know that nomad life was my life for close to four years before I got the tiny home. I was out there on the road, traveling, working, playing, living life large in a go-see-do mode. Saving money for the tiny home. Here I am in a landing zone. And I thought it would be cool in the month of May to do a blast from the past and share with you some tips and hints and everything in between on becoming a nomad, whether you're a nomad now, you're a wannabe, or you're going to be a nomad in the future, there's something here to learn for everyone. So before we go any further, how about if you subscribe, click the bell, and give this one a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. And it's not just about me, it's about spreading it out into the world so other people can enjoy the fruits of being a nomad. The last show I did was on my personal story. Kind of did it in a nutshell, and then I expounded on why I became a nomad and what I've gotten out of that lifestyle. And before that, I did the number one asked question, which is, where do you sleep? Which causes so many people a lot of angst, and they never even get out their sticks and bricks door because they don't want to think about where on, on earth would I sleep every night. So those have been the... Um, to thus far in this class that you can catch up if you've missed some classes now. And I do refer to my book. I am humbly speaking about my book. It was Divine Intervention, a beautiful soul here on the channel, um, edited it for me. Thank you so very much. You know who you are and I am forever eternally grateful. I wrote the book over the course of at least three years while I was on the road. And I'm excited to say that it's now together. It's in Amazon. And a lot of the things that I'm going through here in these videos is also in the book, although in more detail because the book is 240 pages and it's like a handbook. Okay, so budget, today's topic. I love this topic because it was one of the main reasons that I left Sticks and Bricks was to get out from underneath rent and a mortgage payment. And thankfully, I was able to do that. Now, I've got a little prop here. I have some index cards that have my costs on that I've uh, split up into fixed um, price fixed costs and I guess what you call variable, things that change monthly. And it's a monthly budget and I will give you the, the full overview and what I, what I spent and what you can, maybe you wanna get out a piece of paper and a pen and jot some of these things down and put in the comments. Um, did I come close to what your budget would be or your budget would be way over, you know, based on your, um, Habits, things that you like to do, you know, 
how much you want to go see do and how much you want to stay put. There's a lot of, and uh, what kind of rig you're in, you know, gas money alone can change a budget from by hundreds of dollars. So I'm going to share mine and then you incorporate yours based on the thoughts that I'm giving you. And let me know if I've missed something. I, I don't think I have, but um, I'd be certainly happy if you put in the comments also your questions because like I said in the last video, but it was at the tail end, I hope you watch these in entirety too, not just do a little skim. Because you might miss something if you just skim, just saying. You know, that's like when you're in class, if you sleep half the time, you're gonna miss something. I'm guilty <laughs> back in the day in a history class, you know, I'd be sleeping like two minutes. And unfortunately now looking back, I wish that hadn't been the case. But anyways, Last uh, video, I mentioned put in the comments any questions that you might have, not just pertaining to budget, but anything in general about being a nomad, because at the end of the month, then I'm going to do probably one, uh, at least one, if not two videos, depending upon how many questions I get, uh, a question and answer session. So that'll be a lot of fun. So please, please help out and put your questions in the box. And if I just say um, that's in an upcoming video, then you'll know that I'm gonna cover that and then I may even revisit it in the questions and answers. But I won't give you a full blown answer because this babbling brook has a hard time shortening her thoughts. Just saying. Right now, with no further ado, I'm going to read the, like a little pre, prelude, pre, what is it called? A preface to about budgeting here that came in the book and it'll keep me on track and maybe we'll get done sooner today. And you can go out and go to the park and have a picnic after class. Okay, budget. Many people are curious about what you need financially to live as a nomad. Of course, as different as it is for everyone in a stationary home, the same will be true in this nomadic lifestyle. Repeat. I can honestly say I am living a large life with a small budget. True, true statement, highlight. As you are probably aware by now, I am thrifty and watch most of my pennies. Uh, that's somewhat how I got this tiny home. I didn't spend a lot of money. And I also had some beautiful friends out there that helped me out tremendously with places to stay while I worked. Um, you know who you are. Like when I was in Walmart uh, in Florida, I was able to stay stationary and that saved me a lot of gas money. So thank you. Okay, it wasn't always like this for me being thrifty. I lived outside my means with that dangerous plastic called credit cards. Earlier, I shared that as an entre entrepreneur, I also dumped money into business thinking they would grow faster. But in reality, I was on a vicious treadmill leading to more debt and more financial stress. And I went into a lot of details about my debt and how I eliminated debt, uh, something I'm not proud of. But if you get the book or you already have the book, then you'll know the inside scoop on, um, on Linda and her debt situation. Okay, when I was able to eliminate my debt, I could finally breathe, start over, and learn from my mistakes. I can live within my means now without working my life away just to pay the bills and make ends meet. Hallelujah! It says it right here in the book. Without rent or mortgage payments and no credit card bills, I sleep better at night. True statement also. Okay, so that is the little preface to about the budget. And with no further ado now, I have the cards and we're going from high to low. And first we're going to do the fixed expenses. Are you ready? Are you paying attention? Do you have your paper and pen to take some notes? Playing teacher because this is a table topic. All righty. Car insurance, $110 a month. I am with State Farm and it runs me $1,320 a, a year. These are all broken down by year. I mean, by month, excuse me. So if you times that by 12, whatever I just said, that's what it is. I have cheat sheets on the back here. Phone is $65 a month. This just recently went down, like literally. Um, I called them about something else. I'm with AT&T, phone is 65. 
and I said, hey, is there a different plan I could be on and save some money and still have the same amount of coverage and everything? So it doesn't hurt, there's, there's a tip for you, doesn't hurt to call your carrier and see if they can't lower your bill. I've been with AT&T forever. Am I an AT&T fan in the bigger scheme of things? Not really, but there is something to be said about being with a company for that long. And also with insurance, you gotta shop around. I just recently shopped around, can't seem to get any lower than that, so. It is what it is. You know, I'm driving a 2012 now. It was a 2003. That makes a difference. Yes, we all know gas has gone up. Gas is going up. Gas continues to go up. Gas is a reason why we don't travel as often, right? Oh, you know what? I'm going to put this in this column because this is a variable. Oh, I picked from the wrong pile. 300. So let's go back to the fixed expenses. Storage, I hate this one. Just recently got a storage because I'm moving out and I wanted to uh, like sell the locker storage that I had in the back and put my product in storage and all my display stuff. So this is gonna be a cool write-off for me, for my business, because it's mainly the, the majority of this storage is my product line. Some of you who are new, say it, display it. Storage is $59 a month. And when I get back on the road full time and rebuild and move back in to a new cabin, very similar to this one, I will definitely get rid of storage. I will get myself a real storage shed. But while I was on the road, I had storage also. Okay, next is website. Now, obviously, some of you are not gonna have this. This includes my domain name, say it, display it, uh, my website, the actual website itself, I use Squarespace, and this is also my hosting, which I use Bluehost. And I've been with all those uh, for a long time, too. So, website is $35. You know, over the course of a year, that's 420. I forgot to... Let me see what, what over the course of a year, 59 times 12 is 708, 708 a year. That's terrible. Got to get rid of the storage. Okay, dentist, 17. That doesn't mean I go to the dentist every month, like I'm saying here. This is a monthly broken down divided by 12. I usually hit the dentist twice a year, and if I don't have any situations, which I haven't in a while. Let's knock on wood. My dentist is, you know, I'm saying this is fixed, but it could change, is $100 a clip for just a cleaning and a, and a checkup. I get a senior citizen discount. This has been in Texas. So, and I have been negligent about going to the dentist in a while, but when I was on the road, I hit Texas a couple times a year to go visit those Grand Sweet Peas. Never missed an opportunity when I was in Texas to, meet, to um, visit them. Quality over quantity time. And Dennis ran me uh, $204 a year. That is if something unexpected doesn't show up. All right. So Dennis, it is. This is fun. Are you having fun? All right, next, gas, 300, a variable. And the next variable now is $200 for food. In my book, I broke down food, paper goods, and like treats into three separate categories. Now I just combined it all into one, maybe to make me feel better when I'm back on the road because of this guy, uh, food, hygiene, and paper goods, 200. And you know, this is one you can manage too. If you find at the end of the month that there's more month left than money, as my dad used to say, growing up, we had more month than money left, then you can 
obviously keep a notebook, which I did for the longest time. When I first started out as a nomad, I wrote every little cent down to see what I was spending. But overall, I'd say 200. And if I cut back on snacks, maybe we could get that back to 175. What do you think? You know, an apple and maybe a peanut butter sandwich, maybe a can of soup and be done for the day. You know, you can check out. You might think that's low, but not if you're really watching it, you know, I'm just saying. And drink more water, then you're less hungry, right? Isn't that something they say? I don't know. Sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't. All right, next in the variables is gifts and treats. $50, that's $600 a year. I brought this down a little bit. You know, uh, it's basically gifts for the grandkids. I have three grandkids, and that's birthdays and Christmas. And then a treat might be something I treat myself to. You know, I bought myself a little bracelet on the road or a little plaque that says, live simply. <laughs> Things that I, a couple little spatters around the tiny home here. So this could be a little on the low end. So depending upon, you know, how things are looking with my income for the month, you know, I have the Say It, Display It business and I have the YouTube channel. And so, um, you know, I um, am so blessed you know, that um, YouTube provides an income uh, directly from YouTube, from the platform. You know, I'm not saying about donations or anything like that. Like, I, I've never asked anybody for money. Yeah, I have um, received money from some of you beautiful, beautiful people, and I appreciate that beyond words, but it's not something I ever asked for. Um, so... A couple people have asked me, do you have links? Yeah, well, I have the PayPal and the Patreon and, you know, but they just sit there in the description and, you know, they're there if, if somebody asks me or, or wants to use them. But overall, um, you know, this could go up, like I said, if my income goes up. Same with food. Like if I want to go out and splurge at Burger King, then maybe I can do that depending upon, you know, the income. I do have to tell you that, well, let's finish up here and then I'll tell you, how about that? Car maintenance, 28. Car maintenance, I broke this down into four oil changes um, a year, which is every 5,000 miles. Um, it costs me an average of $85 per oil change. I get the non-synthetic, I think, that's the more expensive. I always get that confused but it is more expensive than when I was in the Acura. And so this runs me, oh, like $336 a year for just oil changes. See, I'm not putting in tires because I don't know how much I'll be traveling. And sometimes I push the envelope with tires, even though I know that's not a good thing to do at all. And, you know, something unexpected comes up, but if you're doing your general maintenance, and which I just had, you know, my back brakes done, but I have a little bit of extra savings for um, unexpected, which would be like the teeth in the car. All right, so car maintenance, just oil changes. I do wanna go back and talk to you about gas and where I came up with $300 a month. I average between 22 to 25 miles to the gallon in my SUV, in my Highlander. Whew. You know, that came down. When I was in the Acura, I was getting 30, 35 miles to the gallon. Yeah, just saying. So I'm, I averaged $4 a gallon, which I don't know exactly what it is right now as I do this video. That's a little on the high side, but I thought, you know, if I get out west, that's gonna be on the low side. So I did $4 a gallon. Uh, I have an 18 gallon tank, and if I do 1,600 miles a month, four gallon, four Phillips, 72 times four is 288 um, a month, which is $3,600 a year in gas. I'm thinking that I'm gonna stay put more than go 
like I'm going to do some camping with some friends when I'm out of this tiny home, if I'm not already, you know, that, cha that changes. Like I have someone that was supposed to come today, maybe tomorrow to look at the home. So by the time you see this, um, but overall, I had put $200 for gas when I was on the road back in 2018 through 2021 November when I stopped my wheels. You know, gas was still in a very decent price. We, we won't talk about that right now. So this is could be on the high end or it could be pretty near what it's going to be, depending upon how much Linda wants to go see do and how much we can afford. Now, if gas goes up beyond $4 a gallon, I'll probably just sit at a rest area for 30 days. <laughs> just saying. Okay, and haircut, $17. Where did I come up with that? Four haircuts a year every three months. I really stretch it. Oh my gosh, when I get a haircut, I'm like, when I call somebody or find someone on the road, which is what I did, it was very random. Boy, hit or miss, you know, it's a scary thing to do. But I needed that haircut like yesterday when I would go in and sometimes it was just a walk-in, you know. But I put four haircuts a year, which is 45 to $50 with the tip. And sometimes that can be on the low end. Sometimes that can be a little bit high. So it comes out to like $204 a year, $17 a month, so. There you have it. How about if we put this one? Oh, we got gas in the wrong place. For those of you who like to be organized, high to low and high to low, $17. All right, so what is the grand total? Some of you probably already have the grand total. It is $881 a month which comes out to $10,572 a year. I am living below $12,000 a year on the road. Now here, the lease is around $500, give or take, depending upon if you pay a year in advance and if the lease goes up by 5%, um, then, you know, there's a, a little bit of a, a, a wiggle there. And of course you can always email me and we can go into details if you are a serious buyer. That was a bunny trail. But anyways, living below $12,000 a year without rent or a mortgage payment and without disclosing my social security that I receive every month, I am able to live on the road on social security. Or am I able to live with just social security when I have this lease? I could, but barely. That's where the eliminating the gas comes in. Um, that would be eliminating the storage if I knew I was gonna be here long-term. I got the storage now because of moving. So I would cut back here, I'd cut back here. Um, sadly to say, I've cut here. And haircut, I don't know, my neighbor's been doing it a couple times and she's not charging me $40, $50 to do it. So, you know, I would be squeaking here, squeaking here, but I'm, I'm still able to live within my means um, again, I don't have any debt and I'm not going to go into that because that is, um, I revealed all of that in my book and I don't want to um, discuss it at the moment here on my channel, but I feel in my heart that I am living richer than if I were making 30, 50, 75, $100,000 a year. Why, you say? Because I am having experiences, not stuff. I am still working. So if it was just Social Security, I already told you, 
but I'm working so I'm able to save right now, save for that land, and um, who knows what the future brings. Only God knows, right? In closing here, my insurance, my storage, and my gas has gone up from here in the book. I'm not gonna give you all those details. The phone has gone down, which I told you, and I took eating out out of here and I put it into food. So that's about it in a nutshell. I hope you got some good information from this today and that again, that you, if you're not already subscribed that you will and you'll click the bell and especially give me a thumbs up because that absolutely helps the algorithm. And I'm so grateful for that and I'm so grateful for you. Uh, I'm excited to get out from underneath um, the rent, the lease, whatever you want to call it. And stay tuned for more May motivation, a blast from the past. I'm going to be doing necessities, things, uh, my top 10 uh, can't live withouts on the road. And I'm also going to do a session on power. Um, probably I'll uh, do something on clothing and also I will do something on um, food. That might not be till I'm back on the road because that's when I'll really stock up with food and be able to show you. Um, and clothing might come a little bit later down the road too. I don't know if that'll come in May or not. And also I would like to show you how I sleep in my SUV for those of you who are new. I have a unique way of sleeping and maximizing my space inside my SUV, which I call Happy Haven. All right, guys, I guess it's long enough for today. Please go back and watch uh, Places to Sleep and my personal story. If you haven't seen those already, share this with a friend. I love you guys, and we'll see you in the next class. Don't be late.